The Negro Motorist Green Book came to conservation after it was acquired and cataloged. A researcher was interested in using the book immediately, but it was too fragile to be handled before conservation. As you can see, the covers were torn and partially detached. Here you can see the paper tearing where the book was held together with staples. This being an inexpensively produced travel guide, the original paper is very thin and somewhat brittle. And it being a very heavily used inexpensive travel guide, there were areas of missing paper in the cover and in the text pages at the corners. Some of the paper was bent and a little crumpled too, as you can see in the left, making it difficult to turn the pages without further damaging the book. Our goal was to conserve it so the book could be handled by researchers and students in the library, making it possible for them to hold it and safely turn all the pages. Here's the book after conservation. Folded and crumpled paper edges were put back in place using humidity and weights and then repaired. New papers of thicknesses matching the original book and cover paper were used to fill in where large pieces of paper were missing. The staples were removed and replaced with loops of linen thread. Here you can see the new paper fills in the lower corners. The repairs will make it possible to turn the pages more easily. As part of our non-circulating special collection, the book will be stored and handled carefully for continued use by researchers and scholars at Stanford. And now we'll hear from Benjamin Stone for more information about the Negro Motorist Green Book and for some examples of how it's used in teaching and research at Stanford. The Negro Motorist Green Book was a travel guide that was geared, uh, published by African Americans and geared toward an African American audience. Uh, very much published in the era of Jim Crow segregation when African American travelers uh, were restricted from staying in and eating in, uh, in hotels and restaurants. Really mirrors the growth of the African American middle class and uh, automobile ownership, uh, travel. Um, so it's a really uh, seminal and, and critical um, uh, document that says a lot about uh, what segregation uh, restricted African American folks from doing uh, when they were traveling. And I should also give a big shout out to Professor Allison Hobbs in the History Department and African American Studies, who really was the one that reached out to me and Special Collections to ask, did, did we have one of these? And at the time, we didn't have one. She was writing uh, and is writing on, on uh, African American travel and the Green Book in this era. And so uh, we were lucky. We were able to find a copy that we could we could acquire. Uh, there are some wonderful digital uh, surrogates of this online. The Schomburg um, Center in New York has, uh, I think, almost a complete run. But I think it's it's a different experience actually for a student or a researcher to actually see um, uh, an object like this. They uh, were often as automobile maps and travel guides are, they were used almost to the point of falling apart as this one was. And, and it really was uh, in tatters and, and had come apart at the seams. There were chips, there were uh, corners missing. And I think what you and your team were able to do was to stabilize it and bring it back to a state that it can be used in a classroom. And I really want students to be able to touch these things. And um, seeing the real thing and holding it is uh, is an experience that you really can't get um, by looking at a digital copy. I do think they are great uh, tools for teaching. They uh, really add a lot to, to the experience of, of learning what life was like in this period of American history. For the last 25 years or so in Special Collections, we've been collecting fairly intensively on the history of a variety of civil rights movements, including uh, African American history. And, and so uh, it really has a place um, in that story. And I know a hallmark of, of, of a conservation project like this is you, you want to preserve the item um, and conserve it, but at the same time not alter it in a way that takes it uh, away from the way it was originally produced. And I think that's exactly what you were able to do in a, in a marvelous way with this.